This video is sponsored by Brilliant. Hey, 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 what's up? I'm gonna talk to you today on how you can choose the sex of your baby. I think I'm gonna take this upstairs because it's so nice outside today. So sex selection, or choosing whether you have a baby girl or baby boy, is something that can be used by couples who want to avoid passing sex-linked genetic disorders to their children, or by parents who have a child of one sex and they want to have a child of another sex, um, which is called family balancing. With regards to couples who want to avoid passing on um, sex-linked genetic disorders to their children, conditions such as Duchenne muscular dystrophy, for example, usually only affect boys, and haemophilia almost always passes from mother to son. In these circumstances, a doctor would probably just use a girl embryo. They wouldn't really need to test for specific genes um, as well. So first off, we have a method simply called sperm sorting. This method works on the premise that you can separate X and Y sperm through centrifugation. During centrifugation, controlled spinning causes particles in a sample to become sorted into layers, according to density of those particles. So this process separates the more dense X sperm from the lighter Y sperm. Normally, roughly half of a sperm sample will carry the Y chromosome producing a male child and the other half of the sperm will be the X chromosome producing a female child. Females typically have two of the same kind of sex chromosome, so two Xs, while males typically have two different types of sex chromosome, so an X and a Y chromosome. So by separating the sperm based on density, you can increase the chances of producing a child of a specific sex. During sperm sorting, the sperm cells are separated from the seminal fluid and the sperm are concentrated into healthy and motile sperm, so you obviously chuck away all the bad, unhealthy, unviable sperm. Um, and finally, you separate it into X and Y chromosome sperms to get the desired sex. And there is another method of sorting sperm, and that is through the use of flow cytometry, which has been termed microsort. But because flow cytometry-based sperm sorting uses fluorescent dyes that can stain DNA, the safety of this technique is a bit of an issue at the moment. Um, currently, the sorting process is available at Microsorp laboratories only in Mexico, Malaysia, North Cyprus, and Switzerland. So flow cytometry is a cell analysis technique where measurements of cells in solution can be made as they pass by the instrument's laser at rates of like 10,000 cells per second and they um, pick up the cells by using fluorescent parameters because the cells are fluorescently dyed. So cells are fluorescently labelled and the suspension is put through the analyzer. When the cells pass the laser, the laser light beam illuminates a single cell. Um, some of the light will strike physical structures within the cell causing the light to scatter. This light scatter can be measured and correlated with relative cell size and structures inside the cell. At the same time, light from the laser will excite all fluorophores associated with the cell, which produces a fluorescence emission, and all of this light is collected by the detector. The intensity of the fluorescence emitted by the DNA of chromosomally normal fluorescently stained sperm varies depending on the presence of the X or the Y chromosome. The X chromosome contains more DNA than the Y chromosome. In humans, X chromosomes um, bearing sperm X chromosome bearing sperm have approximately 2.8% more total DNA than Y bearing sperm. So basically X chromosome sperm have more DNA in them. So in a study, which I will link down below, they used flow cytometry to evaluate semen for volume, concentration, percentage of motile sperm, um, progression and viability before and after processing. So fluorescence emitted by each stained sperm after laser excitation was directed through a 400 nanometer long pass filter to um, forward and right angle detectors. So properly orientated sperm were identified and gated based on 90 degree fluorescence intensity. Properly orientated sperm were identified and gated based on 90 degree fluorescence intensity. The sperm identified were electrostatically, electrostatically uh, deflected from the sample stream and into the collection container. For any given sort, only one type of sperm, so either a girl or boy sperm, was intended for collection. And they aimed to have 60,000 motile sperm collected post sort. Once sperm has been sorted, it can either be used by interuterine insemination, IUI, so just depositing the sperm in the uterus after sorting, or with in vitro fertilization, or IVF. And just in case you didn't know, IVF involves the retrieval of eggs or oocytes and performs the fertilization 
in a petri dish and resulting embryos are then transferred to the uterus. This study was carried out between 1994 and 2012 with nearly 5,000 couples. They performed 7,000-ish um, sorts, of which 5,000-ish, I think it was 73% were X sorts and I think the other 27% were Y sorts. The sorted specimen contained an average of 88% of X-bearing sperm after X sorts and 74.3% Y-bearing sperm after Y sorts. So it's slightly more successful if you wanted a girl. It's not a perfect science, but it does increase your chances of having one or the other compared to your normal, you know, 50-50% chance. And then we have pre-implantation genetic testing. This is a procedure that can be done during IVF to remove one or two cells from an embryo and test them for genetic or chromosomal disorders. There are two types of tests, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, or PGD, and pre-implantation genetic screening, or PGS. Both can be used to screen embryos for sex, but which test you have depends on the reason why you choose the sex of your child. In PGD, parents with serious inheritable genetic disorders can have their embryos tested and reduce the risk of having a child with the same condition. Sometimes it's important to determine the sex of the embryo because certain genetic disorders are sex-linked and mainly affect males. For example, if a couple is at risk of having a son with Duchenne muscular dystrophy, PGD can identify male embryos with the abnormal gene. Then these would of course not be implanted in the uterus. In PGS, embryos from parents who are presumed to have a normal number of chromosomes are tested for chromosomal disorders, such as Down syndrome. PGS can also screen embryos for sex, so some fertility clinics offer this test for non-medical reasons, including family balancing. PGD and PGS are almost 100% accurate at determining the sex of the embryo because embryos are tested for sex before they are implanted in the womb. Whereas sorting sperm is effective, but as previously mentioned, you don't have that almost 100% guarantee that you are going to have either a girl or boy. And then we've got the legality issue of selecting your baby sex. It is illegal to choose your baby sex in places like the UK, Australia and Canada, unless there is a medical reason for it. So I had to do a bit more reading to refresh myself with what I'd learned at uni to share with you guys. And I really like reading and learning new things and relearning old things. And I've been using Brilliant's website to learn physics for the first time ever. I'm so excited. It's I'm slowly but surely getting there and pretty soon I'm going to dump a whole ton of knowledge on y'all. Brilliant's pretty great because they know that effective learning is active and not passive and they also know that just watching videos alone isn't um, the best way to learn something new as much as I wish it was. Um, they also know that it's essential to apply what you learn as you learn it um, which is why they've created an awesome course on the essentials of science. It includes the core concepts necessary for a strong foundation in science which will then allow you to go on and do some challenging science problems. The course is designed to offer an engaging opportunity to explore key concepts um, through problem solving. And you can go check them out by going to brilliant.org forward slash science with Katie where you can sign up for free. And also the first 200 people to use that link will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. So go check them out and thanks for watching. Bye!